evil, stupid, mad, toxic, overhyped. Quite a list, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel! Today I will be looking at four things people most often get wrong about GPT-3. So grab a cup of something hot and let's hop right into it! Number one, GPT-3 is an AGI. Or, how disappointing, GPT-3 isn't AGI. Firstly, Let's establish that there is a wide consensus in the industry, in academia, that AGI, which is Artificial General Intelligence, is not there yet. Some industry and academy leaders believe we will achieve it in a couple of decades, some that we will achieve it in a couple of centuries, and some believe we might not be able to achieve it at all. I myself am on the most optimistic side of the spectrum and I truly hope I will be able to interact with AGI within my lifetime. Let's hope so. Now, how does that relate to GPT-3? GPT-3 is a model developed by OpenAI, a company whose mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence, by which we mean highly autonomous systems that outperform humans at most economically valuable work, benefits all of humanity. We will attempt to directly build safe and beneficial AGI, but will also consider our mission fulfilled if our work aids others to achieve this outcome. Here we are, OpenAI laid it out for us. So yes, like any other project by OpenAI, GPT-3 aims to bring us closer to AGI in the most beneficial way. But no, GPT-3 isn't AGI itself Yet, the model has made headlines as one of the most general models capable of solving language-specific tasks. It has a breadth and depth of capabilities unseen before, and so it is tempting to think that it is more than it actually is, which is a language model. The truth is that GPT-3 takes us just one step closer towards a more advanced AI, and it has its own limitations. It doesn't know everything that's happening in the world. It doesn't reason on a human level. But if you know how to work with it, you can achieve amazing results. Now, some people who want to hype up GPT-3 will present it as more mysterious, powerful, capable than what it really is. And just don't fall for that. On the other hand, you have another group of people, the disappointed one, who expected something more from the model than it really is, expected perhaps some general intelligence reasoning skills, for example, and now this group is being disappointed that, well, it's just another stupid model and it's not quite there yet. Correct, it's not quite there yet and it doesn't claim to be. GPT-3 is not a holy grail, it's not an ultimate oracle, and it has limitations and issues that company that produced it is continually working on. However, already at this point it is super usable and super user-friendly to interact with, so if you haven't done it yet, I strongly encourage you to sign up to OpenAI API and start interacting with it. That way you will be able to make up your own mind. Number two, GPT-3 is dot 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 toxic, stupid, evil. <laughs> Pick your choice. <laughs> so, in case of these outrageous adjectives, it's good to understand that there is a major communication gap. These sorts of complaints about the model, most of the time, simply disregard what the model really is, which is, again, a language model. You give it a piece of text, you ask it to continue in a certain manner, and it will generate text in a similar manner. So these types of claims really come from the fact that people are expecting something else from the model than what it really is and what it is good at. GPT-3 is not always honest and it's not supposed to be. It will simply continue the text mostly as it would find somewhere on the internet. It doesn't mean it is not true. It doesn't mean it's trying to lie to you. 
and it certainly does not mean it is evil. It simply means that this type of text is the most probable continuation of the text that it comes up with. And let's also remember that GPT-3 has only seen text. It was trained on text and it understands the world through text. It hasn't seen the world with other senses, so to speak. So especially with the argument that GPT-3 is stupid and limited, this is because it just looks for the most probable continuation of the text that you want it from. And it doesn't know about physical world too much. It doesn't know about physical world more than you. It just knows about things that have been written and that it had access to while it was being trained on. So let's not be so hard on GPT-3. It's doing great considering it has just learned the world through text. Number three, you need a background of dot 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 in order to be using GPT-3. Now, this is probably my favorite thing to debunk. Are you one of those people that are worried if you have the right background to use GPT-3? Can you handle it? Will you be able to understand it? Will you be able to successfully interact with it? Do I need a computer science degree to use it? Do I need to know how to code to use it? And the answer is simply no. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about GPT-3. It has excellent user experience. And even if you don't have computer science background, even if you don't know how to code, you can always use OpenAI API Playground and interact with the model directly using text prompts, which is as easy as it can be. Almost, I guess. I guess it can be a little bit easier. It's super easy and you can do anything from there. You don't have to write a single piece of code and you will get the results for whatever task you wish to resolve with GPT-3. You know, the funny thing is that people without a proper AI background tend to think that they are underprepared in order to be using GPT-3. And the truth is that people that have machine learning background and that have multiple PhDs in things, they are not the best users of GPT-3. Cause what it boils down to is talking as if you are talking to a friend and trying to make it perform a task that it can understand and trying to give it simple human language instructions that it can understand and that it can respond to. So it's really not complicated. You really don't have to train it hard and you can just give it a few simple examples of what kind of output, what kind of result you want and you will get it. And so let's enjoy it. Let's make use of it. And let's not hold back and feel like we are not there yet because we are. Number four, ah, it's too late to start building with GPT-3. So it's been almost two years since the model has been launched. And quite recently, the model has been made public, meaning anybody from anywhere, anytime can start using it. I guess it might make people that are only beginning to look into the subject feel like they may be missing out on something that happened in the past. You know, there's been two years for potential use cases to be figured out, for potential businesses to be built on GPT-3, and who knows, maybe it's too late. Well, this, in my view, based on the book research that I have done, based on the interactions with the ecosystem, is simply not true. I believe this is the best time to be building with GPT-3. I think the initial period gave OpenAI a lot of information on how to make the user experience for people using API easier. You know, when you launch something, there's always going to be problems and there's always going to be things to work on. And they have been working on these things and the product is getting you better. More than that, not only you have at your hands open AI, but you also have all these other awesome companies like Cohere, for example, that also provide APIs powered by large language models. And so there's this competition that is being created and so that these companies will try to get better and better at what they're doing. So in my view, it's an amazing opportunity to jump on the ship. The race for the best model is only beginning. So if you ever wondered whether to jump on the wagon, and to have a good use case for it. Do not think twice, go ahead and experiment and don't hold back 
because we are just at the beginning of this journey. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and hit the subscribe button. I am leaving link to my book on GPT-3 and building products using large language models below. So check it out. And if you want, you can hop on to the next video on my key takeaways from the book research. I hope I see you around. Take care.